If, if, if my little fun there annoyed you, I'm very sorry. God, forgive me and you. And, uh, but I believe that it's, it's all good. I think God had a sense of humor, don't, don't y'all? If, if you don't think so, go look in the mirror. <laughs> and for those of us that know he had a sense of humor, we can tell by looking at you. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you've got your Bibles, go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I believe that I have a, a word from God tonight. And uh, the Lord just uh, kind of gave me just a little short thought. And uh, most of my preaching is only based on little short thoughts anyway. So um, we'll see how deep this gets based upon how the Lord carries it. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gershonites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Enloites, and the Perzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, uh, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. And thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not thou give unto his son, and thy son shall not take, uh, his, his daughter shall not thy son take, un, shall not thou take unto thy son. i got to stop crying to quote and read at the same time. For they will turn away thy son from following me that have made, that they may serve other gods. So will the angel anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall utterly destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we need you right now tonight. I ask you to bless us tonight with your spirit. Touch us, enthuse us, and thrill us with your touch, Lord. Give us power to stand in the name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. You may be seated. I want to talk to you tonight that compromise is not a victory. Compromise is not a victory. There is, this is Memorial Day and we, we love talking about all of the soldiers that came before and the, the, the this and the that. And the, the, you know, I remember in my lifetime, I, I can remember the passing of the last of the World War I veterans. That's, that's a long time ago. But, you know, you're hard-pressed now to find a World War II veteran. I mean, there's a lot of them still out there. Just like when I remember the first Memorial Day parade our church was in, one of the friends of my dad was a Kwani, and he was a World War I veteran. And there was a lot of them, but there wasn't very many left. Out of all that they, you know that served in World War II, there's a lot of them that have gone. But you see, as we think about these things, we remember the wars. We remember the battles. We remember the skirmishes that we fought. America, starting off to fight different battles and, and, and situations, uh, when they stood strong and they, and they made up their mind, we're going to win. We won. We won against insurmountable odds. Just like the children of Israel won against insurmountable odds when they were on their way from Egypt unto Canaan land. They had a promise in that land and they were traveling to it. And God gave them battle victory after battle victory. One nation again after another fell at their feet. God showed them that He could bring them through any trial. He could bring them through any battle. He could give them the strength that they did not have and the wisdom that they did not know. These men were not men of battle. They were men of brick making. They were men of goat herding. And God gave them a military understanding that boggles the minds and they study the battles even today at, at what's at West Point and other military schools. Study the battles of the children of Israel because because there was wisdom in the minds of these men. And God gave them an understanding of how to defeat the ites. Who are the ites? 
the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Hivites, and the Canaanites, and any other ite that you might have in your life. There's all kind of ites. But I'm going to tell you what. It gets a point in time where you've got to get victory in your mind. You've got to say victory is the end goal. There is no such thing as compromise. Because when you make compromise with your enemy, and you try to live with them, and you try to get along with them, and you try to be buddy-buddy with them, I'm going to tell you what, there's never an end to the battle. When America decided that we wanted to be free from England, the British were coming. Guess what we did? We fought them until they said uncle. We didn't just push them back to a mutually agreed upon place. They quit. Completely. We've got to recognize that the only victory is real victory. Compromise is not victory. God has been helping you and working with you. I, I don't know uh, who I might, I'm, I'm probably not talking about anybody here tonight, but, but you know, if, if you're working on, on getting over an addiction to crack, two crack pipes a day instead of six is not victory, that's just compromise. That don't make a bit of sense, does it? It sure does. Let me tell you something. Oh, well, you know, I'm doing so much better, Pastor. I, I only slashed three people's tires this week. You still ain't got victory. You're just in the mode of getting there. Don't quit. If you'll keep fighting, you'll keep struggling, keep pushing, you will have victory. Compromise is just stopping short of a total victory. Too many times, I, I hate to say this, I don't know anybody here that's done it, but people in this church have done it, so just blame it on one. Look around, pick somebody that's not here. That's who I'm talking about. <laughs> They're not here to defend themselves. We'll talk all about them. <laughs> I love everybody now. <laughs> but, you know, I have people come down, and God does great things, and He starts a walk with their life. He starts something in their life. And as they walk, I, I, they just, they declare great victory. Woo, I got it! And all they've done is won a battle. And then instead of continuing to fight when listening to the direction and the encouragement, they get weary in declaring victory that is not theirs. It's hard for somebody to keep walking on victory when they ain't won nothing. Look at Let's look at a few battles. The Japanese. Our wise president during the battle of World War II pushed to make it a point that that Jap will sit down with a pen in his hand and sign a surrender in front of everybody. They wanted to just do it hush hush. But no, in order for the whole world to know that you are a whoop skull dog, you're going to sign on the dotted line and say, I quit. I quit. I quit. I quit. I have been bested. And I quit. We did that with, with Germany. All the battles of World War I and World War II and all these guys that was full of head full of stupidity that we were fighting. I'm going to tell you what, we got to the point where we won and it was declared and it was pointed and everything was done. What happened in Korea? We compromised Korea. Anybody wonder what is going on in Korea right now? The results of compromise. You have the north and you have the south and you have the no man land. And the North gripes about the South, and the South gripes about the North, and they go on and on and on and on and on for now for 50 years. Somewhere around about that. Still fighting, and nobody's won. Then we got a whole rash of compromise. Vietnam. The North and the South. You know, in the Civil War, 
You know, they, they fought till Lee got down and pulled his pen out and signed on a piece of paper and packed his little bags up and went south. We've always been a country that when we have declared a victory, we've always, you know, the part of the reason why Europe is in a good condition it's in because we built them back up after we tore them down. And I think they're going to start another war to get a bunch more of our money. But when we work on compromise and we begin to have a compromising spirit, we never have a victorious spirit. You know what? When our GIs came home from World War II, there was ticker tape parades in the streets. There was joyous singing and there was kissing and there was all kind of stuff. And there was toilet paper being thrown out of windows. Hopefully it was the unused toilet paper and all that kind of stuff. But there was all kind of stuff in New York City. Y'all remember see, y'all seen pictures of that? Kids, they probably won't teach you nothing about World War II, but we kicked their tail from one end of this world to the other. Because we had a mind to fight. We didn't have a war machine. We didn't have all the things that we have now. But we got it while during the middle of it. We said there's a need and we went to work. Hello? They found every piece of old rubber tire and every piece of steel and every piece of this and, every, and they made every weapon they could make and shipped it over there. War effort. Buy war bonds. Blah, blah, blah. blah all you know what? How many of y'all remember that victorious celebration of the return of the Vietnam soldier where they spit on them? threw things at them, called them baby killers. I'm going to tell you what, you better watch out about a spirit of compromise. You better watch out about a spirit and an attitude of compromise. You see, one of the problems we had is come around Korea time is we started letting reporters in the trenches with our boys. And though we didn't think about whether or not they were on our side or somebody else's side. And then come Vietnam, it got real bad. And we started, uh, you know, I, I don't believe in censorship, but Brother Corey, I need to censor what goes on in my eyes. We need to have some moms and dads that says, there's some things down there at that movie theater you ain't going to watch. Amen. Hello? But we was in the mode of compromise. We had a, 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 a baby boom generation that didn't, didn't have a spine to fight. Now half the people that we, and I, I love every vet that ever fought. I don't care why you fought. I, I just, I got a lot more admiration for the ones that fought because they wanted to. Man, these guys over there cussing the army and cussing the war the whole time they were there. I, I, I respect them. Just a little less than the one that said, you know what, I see the reason to fight. And it's called victory. And your walk with God as He's move, bringing you out of bar, bondage and he's, and he's doing great things for you. You need to get the attitude that I'm going to fight until I have victory. That's right, that's right. I'm not going to fight until I can come up with a mutually decided upon agreement of compromise. And you're going to have this and I'm going to have that. No, it's all or nothing. You see, that's why you struggle and fight and, we, and you're tossed and turned at night and you don't have any, any strength to stand sometimes and you feel like you're, you know, your right hand is attacking your left hand because it is. Because you're compromising and you're not victorious. We've got to get a spirit of victory. I will not stop until victory is here. I will not quit until I have obtained a victory. Not in any certain terms, not in any halfway, but all the way or no way. Devil, you're a liar and the father of it. I will not accept anything lack, anything short of a complete and total surrender in my life. Amen. You know what? It makes a joy greater. Hey, there, I, I ain't, I ain't going to... I don't think that, you know... There's some people that I don't question whether they got the Holy Ghost. I just question whether the Holy Ghost got them. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, should I? Okay. I love them to death. I, I ain't, I'm, not, I'm not dissing them because I don't love them or whatever. But I, 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 you know, whenever the Holy Ghost got a hold of me, it changed me. Now, somewhere along the line, I got to be pretty much of an idiot. Hello? Sister, you ain't never been an idiot after you got the Holy Ghost, have you? Don't, 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 don't shake your head no. Or yes, or whichever way. Just sit there real still. 
But then there's an attitude I've seen people to get the Holy Ghost and it's a spirit of compromise from day one. You know, the Lord said, tear down their idols. Well, but God, you know, I just kind of like it. I want to show your victory over it, God. So I'm going to leave this here just so that you've come. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to partake in it anymore. Come on. And there's, I, I, I remember when I, uh, when I used to like to take partake about, uh, you know, what, what do you call them? I, I guess you could say adult beverages. I, I kind of had to sing for adult beverages before I was an adult. <laughs> when I grew up, I realized how stupid it was to work so hard to blow money on stuff I didn't need that didn't change my life in any way, shape, or form or make me happy at all. But when I was, you know, 14, you know, me and Jacques Danielle got along real good. <laughs> now, when, when I got... You know, it was difficult to, to, to put Uncle Jacques Daniel down. And when I, got, when I got power over Jacques, I met wild turkey. And then, and then a little while there, it was Johnny Walker and all kind of other stuff. Man, I got victory over Jack. You know, I... I, I a buddy of mine had a, all these little bottles up in his room, and you know, you, know, you, you better watch it. Oh, I, oh boy, went and pulled a few of them bottles down and poked some holes in the bottom when his daddy wasn't looking. Oh, it's just a, it's just a collection of stuff. Let me tell you something. You better watch that. You better watch that spirit of compromise. Because it will get a hold of you. And there will be a day that your victory chant ain't as strong as it was yesterday because you never really had victory. You never really fought all the way to victory. You still hobnobbing with the enemy. You still hanging out with them. Hello? You got to get victory. You got to go all the way. There is no compromise. There is no place for the enemy in the heart of the living God, child of the living God. Sorry, just little, I told you, just a little thought. It's the same thought, just kind of stretching it out. How many of y'all has had problems in your walk with God because of a lack to fight for victory. I, I know I'm not the only one. You don't have to raise your hand, but I'm not the only one. An attitude of compromise, an attitude of, well, I have a little bit right now. You know, I look at some people and I just say, come on, why don't you pray? Just push through. Don't give up. I got, had to go visit somebody this week. Went over to talk to them. And they, oh, when they were heartbroken and life broken and broke and everything else was wrong, man, I can remember them coming into this sanctuary in the middle of the day and them sweet sounds of their crying and praying, getting a walk with God, fighting that battle, overcoming the bottle and overcoming depression and overcoming sickness and over God healing them every time they turn around. They're getting up and testifying about how great God is. they coming around the church, working around the church, studying the Word of God, reading their Bible, doing all that. And then all of a sudden, God begins to bless them. But the problem is, is they didn't get over their attitude of compromise. They didn't get a total victory. And then the compromise began to get greater than the victory because it was hard to hold that smile up because they had never really fought through. They had never really put their enemy in the ground. They had never really completely overcome it. They just simply got to the place where they had the, the, the goose pimples running up and down their spine. And, oh, it's all right now. Let me tell you something. We've got to get an attitude that we're going to fight to the victory. We, uh, America would be in a place right now unlike any other, well it already is, but, but just could you imagine America today if we had an attitude of victory complete 100% in all of the battles that we fight in our nation. But I imagine what the church would be like today if men and women had said, I'm going to fight all the way. I'm going to fight all the way. I'm going to overcome them completely. Let me tell you something. You don't have to make an agreement with a liar. My attitude was this, when that, that group came to Joshua and they lied about being, oh, we came from a far country, look at our old bags. They were brand new when we left, our clothes were new. They, they, we, were, we had our hair combed before we left and look at it. Now our beards are grown out and we were clean shaven. Look, you lie to me, when we make an agreement, ain't no deal. 
When I find out you lied, I made an agreement based upon the truth. I didn't make an agreement. I am entering into the lie. Hello? God told them very clearly, make no compromise. Do you know why the children of Israel had problems with idolatry? Because they left that little bitty bobblehead Weebles people over at Brother Hart's house and they wouldn't burn it. God said, burn it. He said, don't even learn the name. Do not even learn the name of their God. You know, I, I wanna, I've been wanting to talk around here a little bit about uh, uh, witchcraft and, 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 and cult worship and all that kind of stuff. But the Lord spoke to me and He said, be careful. It's not that it's, not that I, He didn't tell me not to do it. He said, just be careful in how you do it. Because it, it's best not to even teach the ways unto the people of God. Hello? Now, I, one, of the, one of the things that I have a big problem with in, 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 in a lot of my fellow preachers, can I just mention the, this? I, I, but because you can be very careful that you don't let this into your life. But, you know, there, 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 there's preachers that, 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 that you know, I, I don't like the preachers that preach that fat ain't greasy. And I don't like the preachers that preach that you can't breathe fresh air. But you know, everything that you do is also done by everybody else. Every day is a holiday for somebody. Hello? These people that damn and condemn Christmas and Easter and, uh, you know, everything else, every other holiday except for the 4th of July because they like that one. I have never once got down and worshipped a Christmas tree. I don't. I didn't have one in my house this year. I haven't had one in my house in years. If you did, so be it. Just don't worship the stupid thing. But the Bible, the Bible didn't tell you not to have a Christmas tree. But the Bible did tell you don't go trying to figure out what all these heathens out there are worshiping, because it'll bind you. Hello. Just because some fool drives down Main Street to go to some, you know, what's that road over there by the hotels where that, that, that Jesus is watching you sign is next to the adult video store? Broadway? Just because some fool drives down that road to go to the adult store don't mean every time you drive down that road means you're going to the adult store, does it? You see, don't bring that, don't even learn the names of their gods. Don't make mention of it in your home. Hello? Because it'll bind you. You'll start bringing that into conversation, into fellowship. I've, I've said this before, and I'll mention it again. Do you know why a lot of homosexuality is so widely accepted today? Because we started laughing about it. We started being comfortable talking about it. And I went to a church one time, and I preached about a, a Sarah, Rebecca and Isaac. And Rebecca was pregnant, and they just about skull watered me. I mean, it was just, that is a family way. You don't say those kind of words in this group of people. You know, why? Because they don't, they don't let their kids talk like that. They don't bring that compromise into their home. They've held these traditions, and, and, and it, these ain't like hardcore, you know, fresh air is dirty thing. There's a bunch of gypsies. As a tradition amongst the gypsies, they don't talk like that. There's conversations they don't have. They never have allowed it. Now, they do allow stealing and fortune telling and a few other things that we need to talk about. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it set me in awe that some people had a morality situation. That they didn't allow these conversations to come into their home. And that still they would have to take their sons and their daughters and explain some things to them before they got married. When's, you know, I, I don't know who all has had kids around here get married, but you know, when's the last time you heard of somebody who had a grown kid got married and they needed to explain some things before they got married? Why not? Because we have compromised. Hello? We have compromised what the things that we discuss in conversation your mother would have washed your mouth out with water, soap and water for some of the things that you say. 
And I say, Hello? I'll never forget, I got that soap and water treatment one time and I didn't even know what it was I said. <laughs> Some Cuban boy told me, Go tell your mama this, it means I love you in Spanish. <laughs> Sister Savannah, don't believe everything a heathen dog tells you. <laughs> to this day, I don't know what I said. <laughs> That's okay. I'm all right with that. <laughs> but we got to have a spirit of victory. Victorious in our homes. Victorious over our minds. Our minds are not a place of compromise. They are a place of victory. Our homes are a place of victory. Our walk with God is a place of victory. I'm going to tell you what, you can walk into the house of God and shout and run the aisles and feel a whoop of your spirit so much easier when you're not in the spirit of compromise. Too many times we've only compromised ourselves to an agreement. They told George Bush, George W. said, you ought to step out and declare victory. You ought to step out and declare victory in Iraq. Bush ain't been president for almost four years now. And it was what, like, a, not even a year into the war. So it's been, it, that, that was like, maybe a good four or five years ago. He declared victory, Brother Hart. If I'm not mistaken, we're still at war. You want to know why it didn't work? Because the enemy did not say uncle. We compromised. You can declare victory on your side all you want, but until the devil goes, Oh, get off me! <laughs> all you've done is made an agreement to what part of your world you'll let him in and what part of the world you won't. What part of your life you'll let him control and what part you won't. If you'll let the enemy control part of your life in bitterness, anger, and deceit, guess what? He'll never stop there. The devil will always take more than what you give him. The devil will always take more than what you give him. I've heard it said how many times, and you've heard it said too, sin will take you further than you ever intended to go. Well, it's just a little of this, just a little of that. I heard a preacher say this to me one time, uh, not to me, but over a pulpit one time. And, and, and uh, I never forget it was, um, it was, over, it was over a class ring. He had four boys, and anybody know when you raise a whole bunch of kids and you all of a sudden you got a little one, it's, things are different sometimes. And his little one came to him and he said, Dad, said I, I'm graduating and like to go get me a, a ring. And he said, Son, he said, um, you know, it's been a long time since your brother's graduated. And things in this world change rapidly. But no for them is no for you too. We don't wear jewelry. And that was the end of it. You know why there was a, that child knew what was going on in his home and how he knew that things were working because there was not compromise. I, I, I work with our parents and anybody that ever wants to sit down and have a little parenting classes and, and marriage counseling, you're free to just give me a call. That's what my job is. That's what I'm here for. But I tell them when mama says something, daddy says something. It's the same thing. Junior ought not run back and forth one to another until he gets his way. Otherwise, you're going to start doing the same thing in your life. You'll run to God and you'll run to the devil until you get the blessing you want. Did I say that? <laughs> Sister Knowlton, your kids are grown. Can I pick at you? Can, uh, I had... There, there's, there is some, some parent and teen problems in this church. There really is. There's like ten of them. You know, we only got like ten teens. That means all of them's got that problem. <laughs> Hello? Am I right? And, and it, Sister Mary, when you had teenagers, do you think it was any different than when Sister Knowlton had teenagers? They're all the same. <laughs> Brother Hart, you know what I'm talking about? Sister Hart, you know what I'm talking about? Thank God I don't. I ain't going to lie to you. 
I, I, I think I'd have been a good dad through the teen years. But I, I'm not, if I didn't, you know, I'm glad I got them when I did. If I, 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 some cute little thing come batting her eyeballs at me with a 13-year-old boy or girl. No is the answer. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being funny. I'm having a little fun here. Is that okay? But let me show you something. The Lord told me to say this about three days ago because I had a situation with one of these parents and teens, one of the ten. <laughs> and Sister Mary, Lord told me to tell them. And they, they're not here tonight, so I can't tell them. Savannah and Sister Graham and Brother Graham, aren't y'all glad it wasn't you? Is there any other teens here tonight? No. <laughs> it was one of them other ones. <laughs> But God told me to tell them. You're teaching your child to pick and choose the path that they want to go because that's what you're doing. Now, parents, for all you little ones, listen here. Whenever your kids see that your walk with God is tempered by your desire or by what you want in that walk with God, they come to church and they say miracles happening and they feel the Holy Ghost and they've got the Holy Ghost and they say, they're still looking at you as leadership. Brother Carlos, until the day that, oh, 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 oh Billy Bob boy, you're, what's that? Noah is grown, guess what? He's going to look at you before he sees me. And in the process, if he sees that there are some things that the pastor preaches that you don't, because you don't agree with, you don't do, Guess what he's going to do? He's going to look at you and listen to things that you say and say, well, there's some things, Daddy, that you say that I don't agree with. And when they get old enough and bold enough, they're going to start deciding which one of the house rules is going to be their rules. That's deep. Don't compromise with the truth. Don't, parents, Get behind God 100% and your kids will be behind you. You train up a child in the way he shall go. Why is that? Following the law. I, Brother Devin, I, there's some rules I don't like. that You, you, you police officers, y'all just stuck on them, man. <laughs> Hello? Guess what? They give me a ticket if they catch me not liking their rules. You know, you, you, you work with the rod of correction on the seat of understanding. That is $180 out of your wallet. <laughs> Hello? But your walk with God is exactly the same. It gets all clear when I talk about, you know, I don't like 20 mile an hour speed zone over there or, or I don't like to see, you know, uh, this or that and drive my lights on or whatever it might be and I want to do my own thing. But let me tell you something. Your walk with God is compromise or victory. You'll have a better walk with God if you'll walk in victory. I'll get along a whole lot better with them boys in that black and white car if I will obey the law. I can have victory over my lead foot. I cannot be afraid when they get behind me and ride along the road. <laughs> I had one follow me the other day. I... Chasing me. I, Brother Hart, I went by your house and you wasn't home. But I was trying to come up with a good reason why I was zigzagging through the neighborhood. And I don't have a clue why he started following me. No idea, but he made a U-turn. And... Next day, I get to the house and I back in the garage and black and white pulls right up in front of me. Oh, God. Now he knows where I live. <laughs> I don't know who the first one was, but the second one was Brother Alvino, and I was so glad to see him. <laughs> but, you know, you can have victory. You can have a joyous experience. How many of y'all, you know, this may sound kind of dumb, but I know, I know a few guys that was moonshiners, and they didn't, they didn't have good relationship with the police officers. Until they changed their ways. Oh, Mr. Creech, he was a murderer. He was a, a, a bootlegger. He was a kingpin of all kind of mafia junk in Miami. He didn't like the cops at all. 
And it wasn't just because he didn't like the speed limit. But when he changed his living and he changed his what he's doing and he stopped compromising on breaking the law, he became a very large supporter of the police department in Naples, Florida. Why? Because all of a sudden, he started having a better attitude toward him. That's the same way with your walk with God. When you stop compromising your walk with God, you get a whole lot better attitude about it. When you stop walking in and out and in and out, uh, here today, gone tomorrow, guess what? Next thing you know, you're going to have a whole lot better. Church going to mean something to you. Church going to be exciting to you. Church going to be joyous to you. But when you're here today and gone tomorrow, well, it's Sunday morning. I don't know if I should go to church or not. Well, it's this or this. I'm going to tell you what. It's just like uh, your brother Dunn, he's getting a little too excited up there. He's jumping up and down doing that music. And, and he's trying... I know what he's doing. He's playing that whooped up music. So we have a Holy Ghost service. Yes, I am! Come on. I believe living for God ought to be exciting. I like Amazing Grace and I listen to it and I love it. And, I, and we ain't played it around here in a little while. We need to play it again. I like that song. I like, you hear old Elvis Presley, How great thou art, then sings my soul. It moves you. Hello? But then so does, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire, catch on. Hello? Come on, there, there's a time to weep and there's a time to rejoice. The time to rejoice is when you want a victory, when you want over sin, when you've defeated the devil, when the old things are passed away and all things have become you. It's time to get a little excited. Stand to your feet tonight.